It's hard to believe, but it's already early November and it's time for another gardening update. Here's a look at some Swiss chard and some kale that we have in a grow bag. And we also have some Swiss chard in a container. This fall has been unusually warm, so we haven't had a killing frost or a freeze yet, even though we have had a frost. This is the Sugar Rush Cream pepper plant that I grafted seven other peppers onto, and as you can see, it's loaded with peppers, so it's time to harvest some of these. One of the grafts that I did on this plant is the Ahi Rico. I really like the Ahi Rico a lot because it has good flavor, it's very productive, and it has heat, but not overwhelming heat like some Ahi type peppers. Keep in mind that all the peppers that you're seeing right now came from the same plant, and there's still more to pick. Those light colored peppers that are piled on top are the Sugar Rush Cream. And they all wouldn't fit on the pile, so there are still quite a few left in my harvesting basket. That's a lot of peppers, but all of those were from one plant. But we had more plants. This is the Jimmy Nardello. Another productive pepper this year was the Buena Mulata, and it had quite a few left to pick. Here's a look at some of the Jimmy Nardello peppers. We always grow more peppers than we need, so we like to share. The Shishito peppers were very productive this year. That one we like to just blister in some olive oil and eat them by the plateful. The Buena Mulata pepper produced a lot of peppers for us. I gave one of those plants to my sister and she said hers produced a lot too. The white peppers you see are albino bullnose peppers and that's a sweet pepper that as you can see is very productive. All of those albino bullnose came from one plant and we had a couple of other harvests from that plant also. While I was picking I went ahead and picked a couple of Rowia and Lesia peppers. Both of those types are sweet peppers. We grew three different types of banana plants this year. Dwarf Orinoco, Musa Velutina, and Musa Basju. I wanted to cover up the Dwarf Orinoco and the Musa Velutina bananas before we had a freeze. My whole goal for the Dwarf Orinoco was to get it to survive the winter this year. It didn't survive last year because of our extremely cold February. We got down to minus 17 degrees Fahrenheit and we had the coldest February in my lifetime. And I've been around for a long time. As you can see I'm just cutting down the Musa Velotina also to about a foot off the ground. Then once I have all of those cut down, I'll cover them with straw. As well as the Musa Velutina, I cut the ginger that I left in the ground and the turmeric that I left in the ground. Leaving a little ginger and the turmeric are an experiment. We'll see how that goes next spring. I also planted a yacon over by the bananas and I'm just cutting the stems off of that too. I've overwintered that in the ground here before, so I'm confident that it will make it. Even though I wasn't going to cover up the Musa Basju bananas yet, I wanted to go ahead and cut them down anyway while I had the time. As you can see with the limb saw, they cut through very easily, almost like slicing butter. Because banana plants are mostly water. As you can see, once I get started, it really doesn't take that long to cut them all down. That clump you see that I'm working on there is one that I'm going to try to remove completely by digging up the roots. A clump of Musa Basju banana plants will spread outward a little bit each year if you let them. So I think that one clump is invading the garden space a little bit too much. Now I'll give you a closer look at just how easy they are to cut down. I can push that limb saw completely through one of the banana stems in one pass. Even though the next one is much larger, I still was able to go through it 
pretty easily. Once I had all the bananas cut down, it's just a matter of covering them up with straw. I'll cover up the Dwarf Orinoco and the Musa Velutina, but I'll let it get a little bit colder before I cover up the Musa Bass Jew bananas. Keep in mind that anytime you bring in straw, manure, or compost into your garden from outside your garden, you could be bringing in persistent herbicides. I keep adding straw until all of the stems are covered up and have at least about a foot of straw on top of the end of the stem. Then I usually cover it up with banana leaves and then add more straw. We're already a couple of weeks past when we would normally expect to have a freeze here, but when that outside garden does freeze finally, I have some pepper plants growing indoors to keep me entertained. Let us know if you've had your first killing frost or freeze, and if you're just now finding this channel, please subscribe. We'll see you next time.